Okay, well in this next video what we're going to be doing is showing how you can not only insert a record from a stored procedure that's made, you know, custom for a table, but we're also going to show the different ways of executing that stored procedure if you have what are known as default values for your parameters. So let's first just take a look at the stored procedure. I'm going to go down to uh, programmability. Let me actually close that up. And I'll close that up. We want to go to programmability and open that up. And then, of course, stored procedures. And then here it is, insert into customer types. I'm going to right click and then hit modify, hit connect. Now, when you make a stored procedure, folks, comment it. You know, if you're working on a team with more than one person, you know, put your name, put the date, a little intelligent message as to what it does. Um, all that this stored procedure is doing, it's, it's not that huge of a deal. It's basically just doing an insert statement. It's going to do an insert into customer types. And then notice, it's, there's more fields, but it's, only, it's, it's taking four of them and writing them to this table. There's a display field, a description, a visible, and an order. There's another date field, but that automatically gets populated as soon as you create the record. It has a default value. Uh, and that one, that's the kind of record, that's the kind of value that you would never want to overwrite it with something different. Um, you certainly could, but then this stored procedure wouldn't be what you would want to use. And then <clears throat> the four values that get inserted into this are simply the four values or the four parameters that get passed into the stored procedure. Notice something. These two parameters are what I'll call normal but these two parameters are a little different, not just because one's a bit and one's an int, but see the equal signs? These equal signs mean that if you ignore these parameters and just don't even, you know, like, as if they're optional, like, you know, maybe I'll use it, maybe I won't, it'll fill in a zero for the first one, or for false, because it's a bit, and it'll fill in 25,000 for the next one, which is an int. So by having the equal sign there, it's like giving it a default value. Well, how would this work? Well, Let's take a look at our first example. Uh, here, we're going to do an insert into customer types. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all the records from this table. Then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the stored procedure. Now, when I do, I'm going to pass in four parameters two text parameters that'll both say individual, and then one for, you know, a bit to be true, and then a hundred for an order field. And then lastly, I'm going to do a select. So instead of having to write the code for the stored procedure that we just looked at, which is this, instead of having to write all this, all we have to do is just call the stored procedure and pass in the parameters. And so there it is. It wrote individual, for individual, it wrote individual again for individual, it passed in one for true from there, and it passed in a hundred for the order from there. Pretty simple. But now, what would happen if I wanted to just demonstrate this a little differently? In this case, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean up the table and delete everything from it first. Then I'm going to add two records to this table. But notice what's different about them. Not just the fact that in the first case I'm saying individual and individual, and the next one I'm saying business and business, but if you notice, this second one only has three parameters. It only has three parameters, whereas this one has four. Won't that break? No, it won't break the stored procedure because the last one, where I normally would have put, you know, comma 100, it doesn't have to be there because this stored procedure has a default value for that field. So if I run this, notice, now I didn't put a hundred here in the second one. So for the CT order, the first record wrote a hundred because here's a hundred. But the second record, since there was nothing there to put, it took the default value from the stored procedure of 25,000 and just wrote that in there. Lastly, let's look at one more example if I can find it. There he is. In this case, what I'm going to do is, let me just save that. Da -da -da. Now I'm going to clear the table again. I'm going to delete everything. Then I'm going to write three records. But in this case, what's different, the first record is just like the last time we did it, the first time we did it. I'm going to write all four of these values. 
But in the second one, in the second instance, again, we're going to write the first three parameters, but we're not going to put in the fourth one. It's not there. But in this last one, we're going to be really extremely toxically lazy, and we're only going to put in two parameters. We are not going to put in the, the last two. Will that work? Certainly. And notice here that for the visible field, since this one didn't have a value, it, the stored procedure reverted to the zero for false that was the default value in the stored procedure. Now one last thing, what would happen if we tried to run this with nothing for the second parameter? Well you see now it crashed. Because it says procedure or function insert into customer types expects parameter CT description which was not supplied. That's because this one here, the second parameter, does not have a default value. If instead we gave it a default value, I'm just going to execute that real quick, then if we tried to run this, it would be happy. And you see it put that in. So if you have a default value, you don't have to pass something in. But when you do this, folks, always put the default values at the end of all your parameters um, because you, you, can't, you can't have them um, intermixed. It, it won't work. Things will crash in SQL Server.